This is VOA News. I'm Joe Ramsey. The U.S. State Department announced Friday Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has postponed a planned high-stakes weekend diplomatic trip to China as the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden weighs a broader response to the discovery of a high-altitude Chinese balloon flying over sensitive sites in the western United States. That abrupt decision came despite China's claim the balloon was a weather research airship that had blown off course. The U.S. Defense Department rejected China's claims it was not being used for surveillance. We know that it's a surveillance balloon, uh, and I'm not going to be able to be more specific than that. Uh, We do know that the balloon has violated U.S. airspace and international law, uh, which is unacceptable. Brigadier General Pat Ryder, Pentagon Press Secretary, says the Chinese spy balloon had moved eastward and was over the central United States. European Union leaders met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv on Friday, bringing the promise of new sanctions against Russia, but likely dashing Ukraine's hope for swift EU membership. The head of the group's executive commission, Ursula von der Leyen, arrived in Kyiv by train on Thursday, a symbolic journey to demonstrate support for Ukraine ahead of the first anniversary of the invasion. Ukraine's defense minister said new tanks supplied by NATO countries would serve as an iron fist in a counteroffensive by Kyiv to break through Russian defense lines. He told a news briefing with his Polish counterpart that Western supplies of artillery were vital for Ukraine to weather Russia's own attacks in the south and in the east. Find more at voanews.com. This is VOA News. People in South Sudan celebrated the arrival of Pope Francis on Friday. Reuters correspondent David Doyle reports. Pope Francis arrived in South Sudan on Friday for an unprecedented pilgrimage of peace. The head of the Catholic Church will be joined by his Anglican and Scottish Presbyterian counterparts in a country struggling with war, poverty and floods. The violence was underscored on the eve of the pontiff's arrival. 27 people were killed in the central Equatoria state in tit-for-tat bloodshed between herders and a local militia group. Reuters correspondent David Doyle. Nigeria has asked Google and Meta to Meta to control the spread of fake news on their platforms ahead of a presidential election this month. The country's information minister said on Friday, Nigerians go to the polls on February 25th to elect a new president with three frontrunners promising to deal with the rising cost of living, insecurity, and a slow-growing economy. He said he met with Meta and Google representatives in Abuja on Friday and requested that they make posts from official channels visible on their platforms and flag as unverified election results originating from unofficial sources. The Olympic Flame is to take a seaborne journey to the 2024 Paris Games. AP correspondent Charles de la Desma reports. The Olympic Flame will be going for a sail. Instead of arriving overland, the symbolic flame alighting the 2024 Paris Games will take to the seas from its birthplace in Greece. According to tradition, the flame will be lit by the sun's rays at a ceremony at ancient Olympia then carried by the Olympic torch to Athens. Paris organizers say the next leg will be across the Mediterranean aboard a three-masted tall ship, arriving in the French port of Marseille, and then on to Paris. I'm Charles de la Desma. U.S. President Joe Biden heads to Philadelphia today to address a National Democratic Party meeting. AP correspondent Jennifer King reports. He hasn't announced a re-election campaign, but some of President Biden's likely themes will be on display tonight at a Democratic National Committee gathering in Philadelphia. With the State of the Union address coming up next week, Biden has been talking about unity, infrastructure, jobs and manufacturing. The DNC says Biden's speech will highlight Republican efforts to undermine the progress the president says he's made during his first two years, a theme he hit on during a speech in New York earlier this week. Jennifer King, Washington. A man arrested at the late Queen Elizabeth's Windsor Castle home with a loaded crossbow pleaded guilty in a London court on Friday to an offense under the Treason Act and threatening to kill the monarch. The 21-year-old admitted the offenses after being arrested Christmas Day 2021. I'm Joe Ramsey, 